This is Macro Voices with hedge fund manager Eric Townsend, the free weekly financial podcast targeting professional finance, high net worth individuals, family offices, and other sophisticated investors. Macro Voices is all about the brightest minds in the world of finance and macroeconomics telling it like it is, bullish or bearish, no holds barred. Now, here are your hosts, Eric Townsend and Patrick Ceresna. Eric, what a great interview with Ralph. It was great to get a fresh perspective on the fixed income markets. Oh, I agree. And Ralph is a super guy, and uh, I really like, you know, he's a big picture thinker, which is what we try to favor here on Macro Voices. But Patrick, we have gotten overwhelmed in the last week, more listener feedback than we've ever gotten on any other topic, asking you, Patrick, to take your options knowledge and experience, translate What we got from Chris Cole last week in terms of the long vol component of a dragon portfolio, talk about how somebody who's running their own money in their own account probably can't be quite as sophisticated as Chris Cole is without using uh, over-the-counter derivatives and so forth. But suppose you're just using listed options. Is it possible to replicate, at least in concept, that long vol component? And how would you do it? Well, Eric, first of all, uh, our listeners can find the chart book to follow us along. I have created a whole bunch of slides that help explain some of the different strategies, and you can find that in your Research Roundup email or using the download link on the homepage of the uh, website. So the first thing that I wanted to point out is that Chris Cole really highlighted two very different approaches to how to be long volatility. He was talking about the traditional long volatility strategies versus being long tail risk positions. And I thought that uh, those are two very distinct topics that should be broken up into two separate post games. So what, what I want to focus on in this part one is just going long volatility itself. And we'll save that long tail risk positioning for next week. And so the first thing that I really want to highlight is the fact that he really was emphasizing the idea that you want to be long not for a rainy day, but long volatility to make money during a rainy decade. And the one thing about being long volatility through vehicles such as the volatility index, you really at that moment are looking for these spikes, these one day kind of shoot up in volatility that you can profit from. But it's those tail risks that uh, that actually are the ones where you can really profit from a bigger trend emerging. And so one of the things that Chris was saying was that there was no silver bullet solution to this. He admitted openly that the key there is that uh, you had to be a very dynamic and active manager when managing volatility. And this is so true because to me, Eric, there is no real passive way to actually go long volatility without there being that very heavy carry. Okay, Patrick, and we can see this in slide three. Now, you've got the VIX in black and the VXX ETF is in the the amber color or orange color here. Please explain this, because I think a lot of retail investors particularly, they think, okay, VXX, that's the ETF that you use to buy the VIX index. So they should be the same. These don't look the same. What's going on? Right. So when you're thinking of different asset classes, the first thing a retail investor might think is, well, that means I'll just allocate 20% of my portfolio to something like an ETF like the VXX, and I'm going to be long volatility, and I can just forget about it, and, and I have it paired with my long portfolio. The problem is, is that uh, the way that the volatility index is constructed and the nature of the VIX futures, right? So VIX futures represent this like linear forward on the future levels of one-month variance in the markets. And so you have this scenario that future volatility is trading in contango, which is when you buy the VXX, that contango is being rolled out and therefore you have this carry bleed. And so what we can see on this chart is somebody who says, I want to be long the VIX perceives that the VIX has been flat all year, but someone who purchased the VXX and used it as a buy and hold vehicle over the course of the year is down 55% from that bleed. Now, Patrick, I think this is super important because what it's teaching you in a very visual and very, very compelling way is if you try to just use a passive investment product like the VXX ETF in order to gain access to volatility, even with the VIX flat, 
you lost 55%, more than half of your money. So it seems pretty darn clear that using a passive instrument like VXX, it maybe it makes sense for a few days if you're hedging some event risk, but it's crazy to think that you would hold VXX as a strategic component in your portfolio for the long term because it's got this, this decay in it. So if you can't do that and you do want to do something, what's the answer? Is there a way using active management that you can get the effect of the black line instead of the the orange line here? Right. So this is where I wanted to really split up the conversation into two separate segments, one that we're going to cover uh, this week. And next week, we're going to cover a lot of the tail risk ways of going along the market. So that's where you could try to find a minimal cost of carry and you have that high convexity of the the gamma on the wings. And, uh, and we're going to talk about some different ways that you can really put on those uh, longer data positions to, to kind of build up a, a hedge in the portfolio for those big tail moves that he that Chris described as the wings of the hawk, the, that fiat devaluation risk or the disinflationary impulse left tail that could come in in the markets. But we'll talk about that next week. So this week, what I wanted to cover is the traditional ways that options traders approach just getting long volatility. And so I wanted to just spend a little bit of time on page four, just going through some of the terminology we use in the options market for measuring volatility. And the, the option Greek we use is called Vega, which is the measure of an option sensitivity to the changes in implied volatility. And so as one point change of implied volatility occurs, it's changing at the rate of Vega. And so on this slide, what I have is an example where we have a two and a half dollar option and that has a Vega of 20 cents. And it's a starting implied volatility is 10%. And so as the imply with all other variables being constant, so no, we have no time decay, we have no delta moves or price changes. All we have is, is a, an immediate change in the implied volatility going from 10% to 11%, which is a 1% change. That 1% change changes the options price by that rate of vega. So that option that was originally priced at two and a half dollars and had, with a 20 cent vega with all other variables being constant is now worth two dollars and 70 cents now this works both ways when volatility let's say goes from 10 percent down to nine percent then you saw that option go from two dollars and fifty cents to two dollars and thirty cents and so it's uh it's the rate of the sensitivity of, of a particular option to those changes of implied volatility Patrick, on page five, you've got moguls on a ski slope on the top, and uh, you've got the inverse on the bottom. What's going on here? All right. Well, really, what I wanted to illustrate was the nature of volatility, which is is that it's not reverse when you're long a call versus long a put. In fact, you're long vega or long volatility when you own options. Whether it's a call or a put, you actually have a positive vega. To the reciprocal, the seller of the options, those that are short options, have the negative vega. So in this way, whether you're long a call or long a put, as volatility expands, both the call and put will actually increase in value. And at the same time, the options will decrease in value as volatility contracts. And so the, by that nature... When you are selling premium, you want higher volatilities and you want to see volatility contraction while you're short the option. And to the reciprocal, you want to be long options when volatility is about to expand. And so to illustrate this, therefore, the one strategy that is considered to be price neutral but yet long volatility, therefore, is a very traditional straddle, which we have on page six. And so if you're both long a call and a put – you are actually neutral about the price change because you, one of the options is going to build an intrinsic value if the price moves. But you are now long double the amount of vega because you have the vega on the call and the put. And so when traders are just trying to bet on a short-term immediate increase in implieds, Often uh, expressing that with a long straddle is a way for them to uh, to immediately profit from changes of volatility. So when you hear uh, so there's an entire group of options traders that just trade vol, right? That's their that's their game, and they're trying to identify where these different cycles are and trying to profit from the changes of these prices on a day in day out basis. 
to illustrate this on page seven, what we did here was we priced out a $100 stock with a $100 at the money strike, 30-day options priced at a 25% vol. And so uh, the theoretical price in the simulator is that the call option is $2.85 and the put is also $2.85 for a net $5.70 value of a theoretical price of the straddle. And so we wanted to ask, and they're both obviously long vega, and so we wanted to just see what kind of a return would someone long a straddle gain from a change in the volatility. So what I did here was decayed one day of time. So we say you own the straddle and you held it from today till tomorrow, so one day of time decay. But the implied volatility over that one day rose from 25% up to 30%, so five vega points. And uh, what you, we can identify is that those options now uh, had a material rise where the straddle is now worth $6.74 a full dollar and four cent profit. And again, the key here is that there was no change in the stock price and the amount of time decay was just one day. And so that that almost 18% return that you gained on the increase in the value of the straddle was purely a Vega move. It was purely an increase in volatility that created that profit. And so when traders are looking at getting long volatility, going into a straddle is one of the ways that they can express that. Okay, Patrick, you've explained how to use an option straddle where you buy both a call and a put option on the same underlying issue at the same time in order to gain access to volatility right now. What if we want to have volatility as a component of the Dragon portfolio? So we want to have it not just for one trade, but on an ongoing basis. How do you carry that out? Well, that's where we want to go back to that interview with Chris, where he was talking about uh, the long straddle having carried positively over the greater part of 70 years and identified that it had a positive performance through the Great Depression, as well as a positive performance through the 1970s. And so what is it that Chris Cole's talking about? He clearly isn't putting on a straddle on a short-term bet that volatility or will have a quick spike on, on the overnight session. He's building the straddle as a component that is accompanying the portfolio. So you might, let's say, have a 20% allocation to the S&P 500, and then you might have an, a certain percentage allocated to S&P straddles that is accompanying that. Now, the most obvious thing that you can see from this chart is, is the fact that if you carry this straddle to its maturity and the price remains unchanged, there is a huge theta burn, which is the the time decay. You're long both a call and a put. And if there's no change in price, you're paying double the premium and watching it time decay to zero. It seems, uh, well, definitely in a flat market that is uh, for certain a losing strategy. But this idea of rolling the straddle throughout this period is something that, uh, that Chris is talking about. And this comes back down to the, well, the point that he was saying that, that he has to be a dynamic and active manager, which is this idea that you need to be able to roll and, and, and move that straddle as you're going. So I don't know exactly how Chris did it, but clearly to back test it, he had to have a systematic approach for which way he was managing the straddle through that period. So a way that I could envision that being that, that you, let's say, are always long a six to nine month straddle and uh, in the final three months of the straddle, whether it's built a positive return or not, you close it and open a new one that's six or nine months out and you just keep rolling it forward. So one of the interesting things that I'm showing on this chart on, on page eight is the fact that your maximum loss only actually occurs at expiration. So as time decay is occurring and the market remains unchanged, the U-shape in that uh, payoff profile and starts to gravitate lower. But the key to this idea of rolling the straddle is this idea that the market is not going to stay the same. And as soon as you have any meaningful move higher or lower, you're building some form of an intrinsic value. And because the straddle is not in the portfolio to make money during those very short moves, what you're doing is you're trying to buy that tail, right? Which is that if there's an extraordinary move higher or lower, then the straddle starts to enhance the portfolio in whichever direction it is moving.
Okay, Patrick, what we've seen in this post-game segment is how to use an option straddle, which is just one of several different techniques that I know you teach in your options class. But this is, as you said, specifically focused on carrying that vol exposure, not on tail risks, but on the market in general. What can we expect on our next part two when we do the post-game segment next week? Right. So next week, the key is to to look at a second Greek, which is gamma. So when people hear the word volatility, they immediately assume that you're talking about, therefore, trading vega, which is going long volatility itself. But uh, when we're talking about that allegory of the hawk, what you're talking about is these huge tail risks on both the right and the left of happening. And really, that's the idea. How do you buy or put on some form of an option strategy? strategy where if the markets were to have one of these extraordinary moves on either side, how do you create a position that builds huge gamma on one of these big tail moves? And, and so that in, in itself is a whole different strategy, and I'm looking forward to talking about it next week. Okay, Patrick, we'll look forward to that in the post-game segment after next week's podcast. But uh, I, I can feel it coming already just based on the volume of responses that we got about doing this today. Uh, I know that there's going to be more interest beyond that. We can't really take it much farther than this, folks, on the podcast. But I want to pitch an idea to you, Patrick. Uh, I think you should take the whole idea of the long vol component of the Dragon portfolio, and you should make a whole series or a whole class or something for your big picture trading members. Uh, any interest in that? Listen, I'll look forward to getting the feedback from our listeners if there would be a, an interest in that. But I certainly think it would be an interesting idea to put together a boot camp because it's great to talk about the theory. But the one thing is, is that when you go into the live markets and you see the different vol skews and the, the way that the market is, is setting up, it's about how do you put the right options together to, to build a, some of these compelling strategies. So it's definitely something that uh, we should uh, think about. And I'll announce something next week. Well, Patrick, I think you're going to get plenty of interest because it feels to me like this is one where you really need to see all of the mechanics of putting the trades on and so forth. But we'll, we'll see what the uh, listeners come back with. Meanwhile, folks, if you want, you can get a free complimentary two-week access pass to see everything Patrick does at BigPictureTrading.com. Just go to BigPictureTrading.com and sign up for the free trial. We're going to have to leave it there, folks. This episode was made possible by TopTradersUnplugged.com. Remember to get the ultimate guide to the best investing books ever written at toptradersunplug.com forward slash macro guide. For information on sponsoring Macro Voices, please visit macrovoices.com forward slash sponsor info. Listeners, be sure to register a free account at macrovoices.com. The benefit to you is you'll receive our research roundup email, which provides you with all of the best free content that we could find on the internet each week, including downloads associated with our guest appearances, as well as, of course, our post-game chart books. Patrick, tell them what they missed in this week's research roundup. This week, you're going to find the transcript for today's interview, as well as a link to the chart book for Ralph's presentation, as well as the long vol slides we discussed here in the post game. There's also an interesting article from Nuriel Rumbini about white swans of 2020 and an article discussing a call from JP Morgan's Marco Kolonovic that this time is not different. So you'll find this and so much more in this week's research roundup. That does it for this week's episode. We appreciate all the feedback and support we get from our listeners, and we're always looking for suggestions on how how we can make the program even better. Now, for those of our listeners that write or blog about the markets and would like to share that content with our listeners, send us an email at researchroundup at macrovoices.com or tag it with the MVRR hashtag on Twitter and we'll include it in our weekly distributions. If you have not already, follow our main Twitter account at Macro Voices for all the most recent updates and releases. You can also follow Eric on Twitter at Eric S. Townsend and myself at Patrick Ceresna. On behalf of Eric Townsend and myself, thank you for listening and we'll see you all next week. That concludes this edition of Macro Voices. Be sure to tune in each week to hear feature interviews with the brightest minds in finance and macroeconomics. Macro Voices is made possible by sponsorship from BigPictureTrading.com, the Internet's premier source of online education for traders. Please visit BigPictureTrading.com for more information. 
please register your free account at macrovoices.com. Once registered, you'll receive our free weekly research roundup email containing links to supporting documents from our featured guests and the very best free financial content our volunteer research team could find on the Internet each week. You'll also gain access to our free listener discussion forums and research library. And the more registered users we have, the more we'll be able to recruit high-profile feature interview guests for future programs. So please register your free account today at macrovoices.com if you haven't already. You can subscribe to Macro Voices on iTunes to have Macro Voices automatically delivered to your mobile device each week free of charge. You can email questions for the program to mailbag at macrovoices.com and we'll answer your questions on the air from time to time in our mailbag segment. Macro Voices is presented for informational and entertainment purposes only. The information presented on Macro Voices should not be construed as investment advice. Always consult a licensed investment professional before making investment decisions. The views and opinions expressed on Macro Voices are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of the show's hosts or sponsors. Macro Voices, its producers, sponsors, and hosts, Eric Townsend and Patrick Ceresna, shall not be liable for losses resulting from investment decisions based on information or viewpoints presented on Macro Voices. Macro Voices is made possible by sponsorship from BigPictureTrading.com and by funding from Fourth Turning Capital Management, LLC. For more information, visit MacroVoices.com.